original wave car file in there, and you re must remember to copy car file instead of post car. Excellent, PT. Uh, presentation is open for discussion. Levi is the uh, first slide uh, six. You say you can just hit six enter. You say number of homo times one zero one number of lumo. Are you adding two additional states to your band number of bands? Oh, sorry, minus one. Okay. The, the total should come to the number of one. Good idea. Um, Dr. Kung? Can you, can you get back to where you saw the anion, cation, and the side of the uh, The SP aspect, yes. Uh, so, uh, when we look at this, how do we know it's anion, or cation, or a side of the Do we have some simple you know, tips on how to look at this SP aspect? So how, how do we know that it's ground state? How do we know that an ion? How do we know it's an ion? Let me reformulate the question of uh, Dr. Khan. <laughs> if we close this information and we do not know what are the labels, can one recognize and we, we know only that there is the same molecule in different configurations, ground, cat anion, cation, and lowest excited. Can you point out and explain which of them is, uh, what is the sign typical signatures of anion, cation, and excited state? So, this one will definitely be excited states because of the different... Swap, swapping swap of the of population. The, uh, for anion, the electron uh, occupation will be like mm -hmm. two at the right, and mm -hmm. like cation will be two at the left. If you look at the energy, this is like in negative 16, and this is like in negative 2. The ground state will be like in negative like so, so the signature is the occupation. Right? So see whether which state is occupied or empty. Right? So for example, in the excited state, you have the empty, the empty state below an occupied state. So that means you remove one atom from below. So. Very good. More questions? If no, let's thank Whitney once again. And the next presenter is Zachary Gerhardt. I am learning how to pronounce his name for the last couple of years. Yeah. And well, the prison... Huh? No worries. No. <laughs> so, his presentation is, has a key importance. Because he opens a door. He opens a door into the world of spin-polarized models. In the world of magnetic materials. For the rest of the world. All right, so I'm Zach, and I will be talking about how to uh, look at open shell systems and VASP, specifically their density of states. Okay, so what's an open shell system? Well, we all know what valence shells are, and if they are filled, they'll have spin pairing, right? Well, if we do not have spin pairing, we only have one electron occupancy per orbital. In the case of oxygen, we now have an open shell system. So, uh, transition metals also are open shells. Um, for instance, I'm using uh, the aqua metal, uh, transition metal complexes, uh, or I should say hexa aqua transition metal complexes. And the cool thing is, I mean, there's a, a schematic of the octahedral geometry of a hexa aqua transition metal complex, but they also have different colors that correspond to their transition energies. And these are DDT uh, transitions. Phew. I'm going to be using specifically the Titan 3 Plus uh, as a model for generating these density of states. So the biggest difference here, other than acquiring your four fundamental files, is what you do in your in-car file. And so there, you can actually adjust what the spin state is. And just to remind you, the spin state is two times what the summation of all the half-integer uh, spins are, plus one. Those half integer spins, remember that's the number of uh, single electrons, basically. So it's not spin pair. Uh, so for instance, for oxygen, it's two, right? Because you have two times one half, one times two, two plus one, three. It's a triplet. Wow. Fantastic. In our case, we are do doing titanium three plus. We only have one uh, unpaired electron, so it's going to be a little can change the oxidation state because otherwise it would just treat it as a neutral middle uh, complex and then this would be 
wrong. So that's the number of electrons, and specifically the number of valence electrons. So you don't have to count four electrons here. And so that totals up to be 49. Okay, so go ahead, you have your files now, you run VASP, you have a whole bunch of joy. And then if we look into the outcar file, uh, you will see now that your energies for the generated molecular orbitals are now um, split into diff two different spins. You have uh, spin component one, spin component two. And so, up and down, basically. And what you should notice is that the occupancy of the homos and the lumos are different. So for the spin up, we have occupancy up to 25 orbitals. Spin down, we have occupancy only up to 24. This makes sense because we have a unpaired electron. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually go ahead and generate a density of states. So we need to pull that spin component energies out of our out car, place them in these states up and states down files. We want to remove you know, all the text, so that way you can actually read the file properly. Um, and then you generate your density of states by using the script, uh, the address that's up or down, to follow the, uh, the prompts, so a number of states, your energy range of your orbitals, um, Fermi, alpha, beta, magnitudes, all that fun stuff. If it all checks out, it should be Okay, and then um, for completion, you want to plot it, right? So plot it with new plot, do the file transfer with PDF, and then download it. So this uh, is the density of states plot for titanium three plus, covering basically the whole range. Uh, what you'll notice is that it's pretty symmetric where they are evenly populated as far as the orbitals are concerned. But once we uh, get to the point where the orbitals are not equally populated, we start to see differences in their energies. Um, if we zoom in on that one little uh, piece, we can kind of correlate the population of those orbitals to what we may actually understand of their frontier molecular orbitals, why you're actually doing the calculation uh, at initial or you know, symmetry in group theory rules. The cool thing is, is that what you see here is that uh, it is observed and predicted that the octahedral electronic configuration actually undergoes symmetry lowering, such that the total energy of the molecule is lowered. And as a result, the geometry is changed. So I showed you an octahedral complex earlier. That is not its real geometry, because the lowest energy electronic state is in a lower geometric um, um, or orientation, orientation. And so, what you can also see is that, hey, I don't have trickly degenerate orbitals here. I have basically a single orbital, two presumably doubly degenerate orbitals, and then the two non-degenerate uh, orbital, orbitals as well. And then you can actually convince yourself whether or not these are d-based orbitals by actually plotting their uh, partial charge intensities. And as you can see, the script, that these are all the molecular uh, orbitals. Um, and then one take home thing to remind you is that these are all one electron molecular orbitals, right? Because you have your spin up and your spin down contributions. And so uh, the reality here is that you have to use spin polarized computations if you're going to look at open shell systems, otherwise, you would not get anything that's remotely close to real. Um, also, you can look at partial charge densities to kind of get an idea of what do my molecular orbitals look like and what are the possible transitions that can arise from time. Questions? I think Zachary directs on this presentation. And questions are available. Uh, which means everyone is happy running spin polarized jobs and there are no questions. Um, you were showing the orbitals. Yes. And those are for spin up. Yes. What is your instinct? If one plots uh, orbitals for spin down, will they be exactly the same or slightly changed or drastically changed? Um, like, what are expectations? Can the orbital of the same symmetry, like, with, with the symbols, repeat the same pattern of, for up and down? So, intuitively, you would think that yes, they should be 
mirror images of each other. Um, one thing you can realize is that if you look at the VXY here of the V2G orbital, which we spin up, is of lower energy than what one would assume is the V2G orbital is spin down. And that's likely due to it being um, So if we actually had these, if I actually had two electrons, it may be more mirror image. So reality is, yes, they will be very similar, but their energy order may not be the same due to occupancy. OK. Uh, more questions? I have one more. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are showing lines. Yes. Discrete energies. And yes. here you are showing profiles. Yes. What is the connection? So the connection here is this is basically rigid. It is at the equilibrium point or the equilibrium geometry of the molecule. Here there is some thermal degrees of freedom that is taken into consideration. Very good. Yep. Yeah. Let's think that um, what about oh, go ahead. Go ahead. what about uncertainty? Yes, because we are at very low temperatures uh, in these calculations. Because we're not looking at um, room temperature calculations. At least this did not take into consideration room temperature calculations. So the uncertainty is intrinsic to this. Okay, now let's finally thank uh, Zach. And um, we, uh, the next presenter, please come up and set up your presentation, is Stas Adrian, and he is opening another door for us. By now, we were focusing primarily on ground state or artificially populated excited states, but we were not looking on the response of the material to the external perturbation, such as photo excitation. So, first, we will open the door to explaining how material responds to light, light to matter interaction. For example, as you said, my name is Sadir. Um, so, we're going to be looking at the light to matter interaction. Um, so, for this to actually occur, there has to be a transition dipole uh, moment to, or has to occur when the light hits. Um, and the way we mathematically show this is you have um, your ground state and your excited states and the well, dipole operator um, is in between them and that this all comes from symmetry uh, basis and as long as you get a non-zero product um, then you have a transition dipole. Um, and in uh, very basic terms of something you teach to freshmen in, in chemistry is your L quantum number has to go plus or minus one. Um, and here I just show the you know, light coming in, you have an absorption that is roughly equal to the energy of the light. All right, so to develop your input files for generating these spectra, um, you make the states file like half a dozen people have already talked about and you VI it, um, and out of this you need the number of states to, um, for later. Um, you copy the states into an energy pop file, it, that's just how the script works, it needs an energy pop file. Um, then you have to make this new file called VI input underscore overlap, you go one, and then you next line you have number of states, and then the last line you put another one. And then you run the script OS underscore di dipole underscore V3, which makes the OS strength file. Um, and out of that, you need a number of transitions. So inside this OS strength file, there's some pretty interesting things. Um, the first one is the I, or the first column here is the I, that is um, the first molecular orbital where the electrons originally reside on. And then you go to your J, which is your second electron orbital, or your empty orbital where the electrons go to. So in this case, it goes from six to seven. Um, and then your third column here is oscillator strength. The oscillator strength is the probability of the calculated optical transition. Um, and the oscillator strength is related to the transition dipole moment um, by a constant times the square of that transition dipole moment. And um, 
here you have your energy difference. Uh, your, uh, it is, this is the occupancy, so F sub I is there's two electrons in that orbital. F sub J, there's no electrons in that orbital, so it's going from I to J. Um, again, and then here's your um, coordinates uh, to describe the orbitals. Um, and then you generate a plot, which is using the script and spectrum, and you have to answer the questions. Number of transitions, 36 in the, in the case of, for me. Um, and then you say how big a plot you want. You know, you can go 0.1 to 10, you know, to get a fairly large range. And then you enter your width of each line, and you tell, hey, my homo is in um, number six. It runs a script, it generates this file, or it, it generates a file that you can pull out and work on in Excel or whatever your favorite um, system is. But we can use GNU plot um, to plot it, and that makes an SPE.ps file. Um, you can include, after the SPE, an underscore nanometer if you are a traditional one or a traditional um, absorbance spectroscopist and you want to be able to see it in nanometers um, and it's easier to for you to think about um, and then you convert to PDF and get that bad boy. Okay, good thing. Is everyone happy? No, Levi is not happy, Ernie is not happy. Please go for it. Slide three. You are third bullet. Slide three. Oh, sorry, slide four. This one doesn't have. Uh, your third bullet, you say one number of states, one. What if you have, let's say, 2,000 states in your system that vary over uh, at least 10, if not like 100 EV, and you only want to plot the states near the bank gap? What do you need to do? Um. I'm sure probably just modify your states file. I think this number has to, because when you run this script, it pulls the things out of the states file, or the energy file file, actually. So if you don't have the same number, and it uses this file, so if you don't have the same number here as you have there, it's going to be angry with you. Okay, so um, your answer to Levi's question is that if you want to narrow your window of orbitals, you um, trim your states file. Yeah. But then you're saying that this input overlap should match this yeah. energy core. So which numbers should you should be plugged into here and there if this uh, states is trimmed? If it starts not from one but from hundred. So I go hundred? Yes, yes, very good. Uh, more questions? Yeah, just so when when it goes through